Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. Okay, to be fair, at the beginning of 2020, I said I would be buying uh, knives with olive wood handles. Uh, and uh, you see five here. Well, I've just picked up a sixth one. Um, so let's get started on number six in olive wood. Uh, I hope I'm not boring anyone with olive wood. Uh, this knife is definitely a departure from what you see here. So not another stiletto, not another wheel, and not another uh, uh, terroir or uh, side buster. This is definitely something you probably have not seen before. What's more, this is not from any uh, knife company you probably ever heard of either because it's actually made by a company that specializes in uh, bar tools, I believe. And it's called the Slash and Turn by Foster and Rye. Uh, and what in the world could a Slash and Turn be? Now imagine if you will, a Layol picnic knife and a granddaddy Barlow getting together while they're out on that picnic and saying, hey, I got a great idea. Let's have a baby. And that, my friends, is what your slash and turn is. And so here's the bastard son of the Layol picnic knife and a large Barlow, the slash and turn. As you can see, it's got all the features of your typical legiole. It's got your uh, corkscrew in the back here. You have the le mouche here. Instead of a fly, it's got a little symbol of uh, looks like wheat or rye on the, on the uh, le mouche or, or fly or button, whatever you want to call it. You've got these wonderful bolsters that take up uh, about a third of the knife. Uh, typical of what you see on a barlow big bolster at the top. It's slanted, which is pretty cool. Double ringed, which is also pretty cool. Uh, the corkscrew works really well. A little stiff, but not too bad. It does over rock, which you kind of need for pulling those corks and everything. Uh, nice olive wood handles. It's nicely fitted too. I mean, it's right up there against it. You can see the, the wood is really in there nicely. Uh, Brass pins, smooth as a uh, baby's bottom there, too. You can barely feel them, if you can feel them at all. Um, the stainless steel, otherwise, throughout. I do not know the quality of the stainless steel on the blade. I'm assuming it's like a 420. I really do not know. I'm not too concerned about it, because basically what you're going to use this blade for is uh, for cutting bread, cheeses, uh, um, vegetables, um, sausage, things of that nature. So, you know, it, all it has to be as good as a kitchen knife, nothing, you know, an in, a cheap kitchen knife. You also got the uh, bottle opener up here on top, so you can actually open a bottle if you want to. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You've got both types of bottles covered, wine bottle, beer bottle, and uh, really just a cool looking knife uh, and the only reason I found it is because I was looking for knives in olive wood and this one popped up. Notice the swell in that handle too. How it gets nice and big there. It really feels good in the hand. I mean really feels nice and yeah it's the size of a of a barlow. I mean close. Look one two three four five so five inches long. Uh, you could also say it's like a cross of the uh, of like a uh, buck knife because when you look at the shape of it, it kind of reminds you of a buck knife too. Um, but you don't get those features on a buck knife. No corkscrew, no cap lifter. And a uh, really good blade, the blade length. Um, looks like it's about three and three quarter inches. Uh, I'll do some actual measurements and put it at the very end here, but not bad at all. Uh, Good snap on the blade, and that was the kick hitting, as you can tell. You got definite movement on the blade afterwards. The blade does not hit the back spring when you're closing it. You can see the uh, the spring moving there. And uh, 
it's nice to see a Lamouche that is not a fly or a bee. This is just the uh, crossed wheat or crossed rye going on there. And uh, I don't know. I'm just really kind of happy with it. I, it was a surprise find. Like I said, it's not made by a knife company that I know of. It is marketed through Foster and Rye, which is a uh, a a company that supplies bar bar equipment. And the knife is called the Slash and Turn. I have uh, cut some paper with it, and it does a decent enough job. I don't know. Well, of course it won't do a decent job now that I'm in front of the camera, but. It cuts paper pretty well, and I'm sure it'll cut through vegetables and stuff. Maybe that's what I'll do later is cut up some vegetables with it in front of the camera. But there you have it, my uh, Foster and Rice slashing turn in olive wood. Well, something you're just not going to see anywhere, but definitely still a traditional knife, or at least a modern take on traditional knives. In this case, a cross between a legal style picnic knife and a granddaddy barlow or even a five inch lockback except it's not a lockback the slash and turn through foster and rye how cool is that come on let's get the piggy tail out Oink, oink. I mentioned in the uh, notes in the video that I would come back to the bottle opener and that's what I'm doing now. And the reason being is the way the bottle opener is cut into the spine or the blade, it looks like you actually need to open the blade in order to open a bottle. And that's not at all the case. And actually, if you're doing that, it could be a safety issue because you're actually putting pressure on the spine of the knife, uh, which in theory could make the knife close on you, um, especially if alcohol is involved and chances are you're using this bottle opener to open a beer bottle. So um, following this is a short video on how to open a bottle using this bottle opener and that is followed by a slideshow of the knife and some other details about the knife. So the cap lifter was kind of confusing me because of the direction it's in. It looks like you would need to open up the knife in order to open the cap. And it was kind of goofy. I was thinking you should be able to open the cap with the knife closed, which would mean it would cut the other way. But it isn't set that way, and it's kind of goofy if they're expecting you to reach across or something. But then I realized what you do is you just turn the knife, you know, hold the knife upside down in your hand and it opens fine so that's the way you use the cap lifter on this knife it's fine you just hold the knife upside down in your hand and pop it off works perfect all right going to go off and have a beer Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.